Yo, yo. Welcome to Stargazing, a show about the figures and influencers that surround the superstars in NBA culture. I'm Jovan Buha, an NBA reporter at The Athletic. Joining us now is Daryl Ann, a.k.a. Gradient Visuals. Daryl has carved a unique position in the photography world. He's the official photographer for Clutch Sports, a sports agency run by super agent Rich Paul, who represents players like LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Daryl, thank you for being here. It's good, bro. It's good to be here. How you doing, man? I'm good. Um, it's actually like my first podcast ever, so I'm happy it's with Th- you. Thank you for Long doing it. Long time homie, <laughs> Yovan. Yeah, um, I'm super excited. There's a lot to say that I haven't really said. I kind of keep to myself a lot on Instagram and stuff, so I'm excited. I'm excited to share today and uh, answer some questions. I, I appreciate you being <laughs> here, man. Um, of course. So let, let's start with this. How and when did you fall in love with basketball? Because I, I think that's the unique thing that, that kind of ties this all together. For sure. Um, I don't know. Basketball has always been like part of my family. My dad was a huge Lakers fan growing up. Um, and I would say it probably started there. I wasn't like too great at basketball. So I guess that's why I found something to like keep me in the in the realm of basketball, but not actually play. Um, but yeah, my dad was a big fan. I remember growing up, like, for example, we used to go camping a lot and someone from our group of friends or my dad's friends used to go home, record the game, bring it out in the middle of nowhere. It was like three or four hours away and we'd watch on on like a small little TV, (laughs) um, and still try to watch games because people didn't want to miss games. And I was probably like, I don't even remember, probably like six or seven at that time. And so that was probably like one of my earliest memories of like watching basketball and then obviously growing up the teams that were playing in LA were so good so it was like hard to not be a fan of the Lakers um you know the Kobe Shaq era and and stuff like that even I remember growing up I was like super short so people used to call me Nick Van Exel sometimes (laughs) which was weird I I mean I didn't really get to watch him play too much but I knew he was good and uh yeah I mean that's kind of where it all started I tried to play in like high school not not great so I just never went into it but I still kept watching the game and um, I think that's kind of where it all started for sure. D- did you play like Nick the Quick? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was definitely quick, but I wasn't like that great. So yeah. I, not 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 too much, but <laughs> I guess because I was small and quick, that's what they were saying. So w- were you always into photography? How did you know? How did that draw your interest? Yeah, so that's crazy. Actually, um, I didn't buy my first camera till like I graduated college, actually, which is crazy because um, you know people who are like in this space have been shooting for so long and so I always feel bad when I say like I just bought my camera I don't even know I think that's 2015 is when I first bought my camera um but before that I was never taking pictures and I was never shooting videos or anything like that so um I don't even know where like the thought of shooting came from um but yeah it was definitely later on in in life (laughs) And then, so how, how did you get into it? Um, so at first, um, I guess I guess we could start from college, and uh, I wanted to be a pharmacist first. And so this was like in eighth grade. I had told my parents like, "Hey, I, I kind of have an idea of what I want to be." And so that kind of like shaped where I went to college. I went to U of A, um, University of Arizona, in Tucson, and um, I was going there for pharmacy first, and. You know, it's it's just one of those things where you kind of pick a career and then you kind of have that goal to be it and you don't look at anything else until like you get there. Um, But then I hit college, had my first year, I did terrible. I think my GPA was probably like a 1.8 or something, got on probation and I thought I was about to get kicked out and get like sent home and it was just a rough like freshman year. I just kind of did try to do too much at one time. and then, so I don't know, it, it just was hard to like picture myself doing that anymore. I was just struggling so bad. And so um, I turned to a different degree, which was nutrition, because I kind of liked food at the time. And it also was the same path as pharmacy. So it was like the same classes. Um, and I ended up graduating in that, which is crazy because <laughs> I didn't think I was going <laughs> to graduate at all. Um, I ended up graduating, coming back home um, to California, to L.A., and then um I took a job probably like two weeks after I got back and it was at a hospital um, and then I had done that job maybe for like a week or two and it was probably like the hardest two weeks of my life like 
you know, I never really had a real job up until that point. It was I, like doing retail or like here jobs here and there. But this was like a actual job where I'm waking up at like 5.30, going to the hospital. Um, and it was tough. I mean, I, I grew up around a lot of like healthcare um, people in my family, like nurses and, and doctors and stuff. And so I never realized until I got there how hard it is like in that space and like, you know, seeing people sick all the time it was it was low-key like kind of depressing in there so like it was tough it was a hard time for me um so after two weeks of working at that place i i I, I went to my you're like i'm out (laughs) i went to my parents and i was like i I don't know if this is me like and which is crazy because you you know you do like four or five years of school and like you think when you get back you find your job and like you're set you know and i thought i was good like i was going to do nutrition at a hospital um, and then it just, I don't know, the first two weeks it wasn't for me. And um, it, it, it's tough to come to that realization because, you know, you work so hard and then um, you kind of feel lost. Like, this isn't what I want to do anymore. So, yeah, after two weeks, I kind of quit. Uh, I told them I was just going to look for another opportunity. And then um, it came at a good time because my family actually had planned a trip for that summer. So this was like the summer I got back from college. Um, And it was like a Euro trip. We went to like London, uh, Italy, Spain, all those. And so right before the trip, um, I had bought my first camera. And this was just to take pictures like wherever we went. Um, I had no experience with it either. It was a a Canon T6i was my first camera. And um, yeah, I took it along on this trip. Um, It's my mom, my dad, and I have a younger sister. And so it was just us for like three or four weeks and we were just going around Europe it was super fun but um that's kind of where like I first started using a camera um I was taking pictures taking videos and like stitching them together and like making little clips here and there but um that's where I first got my camera started editing and and doing all that stuff and when we came back I kind of just fell in love with shooting and photography and videography and all that stuff and so um I just kind of find like tried to find different opportunities here and there whether it be uh, like weddings is kind of where I started or um, some of my friends started their own businesses I would kind of help out with you know shooting product anything I could find I would just kind of start to shoot here and there and find different opportunities and that's where kind of my love for photography started so you you fall in love with photography and then how does that you said the wedding photo that when I met you Mm-hmm. You were doing a lot of wedding photography, right, how, right. you know. How, so, how did you get into that, and, and what was the process of going from being a wedding photographer to eventually ending up at Lakers Nation? So, it, I feel like everything that I start is all in connection to usually one person who kind of puts me in the right position. And this is how weddings kind of started. I had went to one of my cousin's weddings at the time. Um, And obviously, like, when you go to the wedding, there's a videographer and a photographer. Um, And so just the one that was at their wedding, I just went up to them and told them, you know, like, what I did and and that I had a camera and just kind of got close to them and asked them for advice. And then eventually, his name is Justin, by the way. Shout out Justin Element. Um, he, He had asked me if I just wanted to shoot. And this was off of no experience. Like, I had no portfolio. But he was a nice guy. He saw that I, I kind of had some kind of skill in it, but um, and was willing to work hard. And so he had told me to um, join his company. He has a company of like eight or nine shooters, and they all kind of just do weddings here and there, which is crazy because you kind of, if you start, you have to kind of fight your way to get those weddings and show portfolios and stuff. But with him, um, he had such a big portfolio, like he can um get these weddings easier and then just kind of hire us as shooters to go so off the jump i was shooting maybe like three or four weekend or three or four weddings a weekend and at by the end of maybe like the first two years that i had started shooting i had shot maybe like 60 70 weddings i don't even know i don't even know (laughs) honestly don't even know the number but are, are you there like for the duration of the wedding yeah so and it's from like the morning until night um, when they're getting ready until like the end of dancing, which okay. it's a long day. Uh, what I say about uh, wedding photography and videography is it's um, super good money, but it's really tough, like really hard. And if you 
it's I guess it's high pressure. Like in basketball, if you miss a moment, it's like there's other people that are going to get it or, um, you know, the TV cameras are always on. So you're not really missing too many things. But at a wedding, like if you <laughs> <laughs> if you miss like the first kiss, you're kind of screwed. Like, like the highlight of yeah, someone's there's life. There's no going <laughs> yeah. back. The highlight of someone's life, the biggest day of their life. And if you miss something, it's like, oh, it's it's crazy. Luckily, like, can you can you recreate <laughs> yeah. that? <laughs> Luckily, nothing ever happened like that. Um, but yeah, wedding wedding photography definitely helped a lot because it it teaches you how to be like on the go and you know um, how to edit just because you know obviously brides they don't want like normal pictures they want you to you know pay attention to detail and make sure all the lighting and the coloring is correct so it definitely taught me a lot I would say wedding photography um, but yeah it was it was crazy at, at that time I didn't really realize how many weddings I was doing but when I look back it's like so crazy I, all my weekends were gone like from Friday to Sunday I was shooting weddings so it was crazy so, and, and you just got married, correct? <laughs> I did. So did <laughs> I did just who, get married. Who was your wedding photographer? Um, it was this Congrats, girl named. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, it was this girl named Hannah. She was a friend of a friend, but my bride actually found her, and then I just had found out she was like mutual friends through like one of the shooters um, that I used to shoot weddings with too. Um, she's great. She's super solid. Um, we just got our pictures. <laughs> two days ago so I, we were looking through them and they're, and they're sick okay they're, they're they're super cool i'll probably post a couple <laughs> soon but yeah um my wedding was super dope though it was super fun i always was nervous because of how many weddings i've shot it's like i have so many expectations which is weird yeah. i know like for the for the groom to have the expectations but um i mean everything was super fun like my family and friends were all there and i was just having a good time so super dope that's dope congrats man thank you appreciate uh, it. so how do you how do you got the name gradient visuals how did you come up with that yeah it was weird so when you when you had had said that you were going to ask where my name came from i really had to think about it because it was so long ago um but i just remember so i have a personal instagram and obviously it was just like from my name and I just remembered making the decision to like make a separate Instagram for business and um, making that a focus. And so when I was choosing a name, um, the only thing that really kind of stuck out to me was my transition from being in the healthcare field to being in like a creative photography field. And so um, I came up with gradient visuals because of the term gradient. It was like two what it reminded me of was two different things that have to come together in the middle where it shows balance and trans it shows balance and shows transition and so at like the that. time i was coming from like a totally different field into photography and so i just felt like i had to f somehow find a balance in the middle to like who i was supposed to be and then I also like the color gray, so I just added a Y in there, so that's why it's a gradient. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I just liked how it shows. It's a symbol of, like, growth, balance, and all of those things put together. And then I also just like, obviously, colors, so, like, the whole color gradient. That was, that was like, what I had thought at the time. And then, it, it, and then you just never know, like, what things become. And so, you know, at the time I was like, I'll, I'll keep this name, but, you know, maybe I'll change it in like a week or two. Um, but it, it's crazy that it's kind of stuck. And what I also learned is like whatever name you pick, it doesn't really truly matter because whatever you do, if you believe in it, like the name will just be the name. You know what I mean? And so at the time, I wasn't really too worried about the name. Like I know some people kind of, you know, sift through a lot and kind of do research. And I kind of just thought of it put on the Instagram and just kind of went with it and, and now it's where we are today. <laughs> so are, are you committed to that for the long term? Is that, are you, are you ever changing it to Daryl Ann or are you? Uh, I, if I would ever change it, it would be to that. Just, okay. you know, just to be a little more professional, but I feel like I'm too deep in. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> just like with the tags and, and stuff, I just don't want to lose <laughs> a lot of that stuff on, on Instagram. So I'll probably keep it for that. And if I make like a website, just keep it my name. But I have thought about making it just my name if anything but no other name i like gradient visuals is cool it's cool with me so what, what when you commit to becoming a photographer and, and you're doing these uh wedding shoots for for multiple years mm -hmm. are, is the goal in mind to eventually get to covering the lakers and in, in the nba or is it kind of let's see where photography takes me and i do have a passion for basketball yeah. or like how, how calculated was your your plan at that time so that part kind of came up randomly 
Um, so I was shooting weddings at the time, and then I think I had just seen a random tweet from Lakers Nation. They tweeted out, hey, we're looking for, I think it was riders, and then I can't remember what the other position was, but I had emailed and said, hey, I'm interested in this position. Um, I don't have any previous writing experience, but on the media side, like I could help out. I do know like Photoshop and um, Premiere Pro, all these Adobe um, Adobe programs, which I had learned from the, the wedding company. They had taught me, they had bought all the programs and taught me everything, which was crazy. So that was also a blessing. Um, but yeah, they actually just tweeted it out. And then I responded in an email and I received the, the email. This was actually only like two or three months into me shooting so I was very new at it so I was actually surprised they responded but um the person who actually responded was Serena I don't know if you yeah, you remember Serena, Serena Winters Winter. yeah. yeah and Drew who was also handling most of the media stuff but they literally just emailed me back said you look like a good candidate come for an interview and then I came through did the interview and then like within the week next week or two they just <laughs> it was crazy within the next week or two they had emailed and said um we have the draft coming up do you think you can come and shoot or like edit some some graphics for it and i was like already <laughs> like this is so <laughs> crazy and the first so my first day or one of my first days on the job was the day lonzo got drafted that was like when okay. i first started with lakers nation 27 or 17 right yeah, yeah i believe so um i went to the facility the, the old the old practice mm -hmm. facility um and that's where they held like that big media party when they had their draft pick and um yeah that was that was my first time on the job which was <laughs> obviously insane i it, it's just it, it's always crazy to me looking back like how many people gave me an opportunity without like a crazy portfolio or anything starting from justin and even drew and serena like my portfolio was not crazy at all i was sh shooting the bare minimum but they really just kind of gave a chance and it was crazy it was so crazy i don't even know how it, it happened uh, along those lines how did you develop your aesthetic because i think you have a very unique aesthetic with right. your your both your photography and your editing mm. how, how, what went into developing you know the, the color palette and, and just you know the type of shots that you, you do take um so i guess i i don't want to give away the secret sauce obviously okay. yeah. but you got to keep something <laughs> keep something but i guess i'll tell you kind of how i got there which is fairly simple so obviously i started out in weddings and so when i was editing wedding pictures there's just like certain techniques that i had learned that were good for those you know keep them dramatic you know keep the the dark darks and the highs highs and then when i had first started shooting basketball which i had never done until I got to the Lakers Nation, the only thing I knew how to do was edit weddings. And so the reason my stuff looks like how it looks like is because I took what I had known from weddings and applied it to like basketball pictures. And that's why, um, you know, my pictures kind of have like this dramatic feel mm -hmm. as opposed to a very like bright, um, you know, normal, typical basketball documentary type pictures. Uh, I had added what I had learned from wedding photography and applied it to basketball photography, if that kind of yeah, makes yeah. sense. And uh, that's just where my aesthetic kind of stemmed from. And then obviously over time, it just builds and becomes different things. You experiment here and there, different filters become, you know, what you what you use on the regular and then you just kind of experiment from there and that's kind of where it all stemmed from. And then what is something that you feel like differentiates you from other photographers because i think as you said you you, you caught some breaks like you, you got the lakers nation uh mm -hmm. position but you know what what do you think kind of made you stand out in comparison with other people because I, I know the photography game you know that there's a bunch of people who yeah. would love to be in your spot right now right and uh that are coming up and we're coming up around the same time as you right. so what what's one thing that you feel like differentiated you from other photographers? You know, maybe it is your style and aesthetic or were you doing, you know, was there another tactic that you were using to, to kind of get people's attention or uh, what? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely thought it was aesthetic as, at first because everyone that kind of complimented me on my stuff, they would talk about, you know, the editing and how it just looked different from other pictures. I definitely feel like standing out is, is the most important thing 
um, when you're shooting sports, uh, it's so easy to just kind of take, for example, when one play happens, there's 50 photographers taking that one play. And so you have to imagine if one of those pictures is going to stand out, you have to do something super different. And that's kind of always the approach I took when I was shooting, you know, a game or even just like practice or a workout is if you want to put this picture out, make sure it's different or make sure it looks different from someone who has the same angle. Cause we're all sitting together. You know what I mean? My bad. <laughs> we're all sitting together. So it's like, everyone's pretty much going to put out the same picture. So what can you do differently? Um, I would probably say the one person who kind of taught me this is a mutual friend of ours, but Cam Cool Mac. Um, so I had met him early on. We had shot workouts together with Drew, Drew Hanlon. Um, that was kind of my, also my other first break, which was crazy. Cause you know, we were shooting in the gym for like hours at a time and it was just time for us to like experiment, sit there and, and be in the gym for hours. And, you know, sometimes that gets a little boring. I mean, not, not boring, but you're shooting the same player doing the same yeah. workout. You know what I mean? So that was the time where, you know, Cam, which is a good friend of mine now, but at the time he didn't have to like tell me this, but he was just teaching me how to like be different, use different filters, you know, change the colors, even though they look weird. Um, he's definitely taught me how to do that. And then I kind of, from then on became more aware of just like trying to be different for sure. What was the first I made it moment for you in your career? And, and, you know, is that a viral photo? Is that a player mm -hmm. reposting a photo on their story or, or on their page? Like what, when, when you hear that, what do you first think of? Um, there's a couple, definitely when, when people started first posting me, it was, it was unreal. I, I didn't even know how to feel at the time, but the first I made it moment for me, um, when I really, really think about it was probably, um, all-star weekend in Chicago. I think. I believe this was 2020, right before the pandemic. Um, so at Clutch, they put together like a, a dinner and this is just to celebrate all the all-stars there. Um, and they had put this dinner together and a lot of, you know, celebrities and, and rappers were there too. And then obviously everyone at the company um, and then the all-stars were there too as well. And I just remember starting the night and being like, this is a very important dinner. There's like not really anyone else shooting it. If it goes wrong, like it's on you, but also at the same time, like I'm thankful for the opportunity to be there and like shoot all these people together in one room. Um, and just the collection of people at one time was just so overwhelming, but definitely that time I was like, I think, I think I'm here a little bit, <laughs> um, which is crazy. Cause I would always think it would be something on the court, but you know, just something so overwhelming at the time was just something about it made me feel really proud of like the work I've done and how far I've come. Um, but then that wasn't even the, the start of like the stuff I was doing after. So, but at that time, that was definitely the craziest moment. And then after that was pandemic. So then, I, <laughs> it just, <laughs> then everything then changed. It, it just went crazy. <laughs> yeah, then it just changed. So, um, but yeah, that was definitely like one of them. Um, and then just like when, when people started posting me, definitely was a great feeling because you never know like who really likes your stuff but at the end of the day if if it's the person who you're shooting that really likes it that's really all that matters to me um so when they started posting when players started posting because they liked my my pictures that's when i thought maybe yeah, i might have made it a little bit yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well well speaking of, of people reposting you uh i think the biggest one of course is lebron and Le Le lebron was one of the first players to, to start posting you uh, what what was that like? Because, you know, he obviously has the biggest platform in the NBA and, and for him to not only post you on his story, but also he, he was posting you on, on his actual page. And that was before you were at Clutch. Like, yeah. what what was that like? That that was, I keep saying the word crazy because I really don't know how else to explain <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, around the time I started with Lakers Nation, I had started like I said around the time Lonzo got drafted so obviously there was like two or three years where it, it was kind of tough like they were losing a lot of games and you know out of nowhere LeBron came here and 
I was just excited as everyone else. And it was like, that at the time I didn't realize, oh, you're about to shoot LeBron and on the Lakers. To me, it was just like, oh, he's coming to the Lakers. That's going to be a crazy thing. But I didn't even think about like the whole shooting aspect. So once he got here, I was just super excited to get on the court and, you know, just witness everything that he was doing. And so I started shooting that season and that was the same season I think he got injured. And then he went or when he came back from that, he went to a practice and that's something that I had shot usually. I usually went to all the practices. And so I remember seeing him back on the court and I was like, oh, he, he must be coming back soon. So I started taking pictures while everyone was shooting videos of the interviews. And then I just remember leaving that, heading home. But like right before I headed home, I just posted the pictures real quick on Instagram and then drove home, which was like a two hour drive. So I wanted to I wanted to make sure I got the pictures off before I headed home. And then by the time I had got home, he had reposted the pictures and then he also credited me credited me in the caption. And this was like I think I was probably at like 7,000 followers at the time. And then overnight, I think after he had done that, I think I got to like 20,000. And just that whole like weekend, I just didn't know (laughs) what to do. My phone was going crazy. And um, I remember people were calling to like write articles on me. There was like actually an article written on me. And I was just, I had no idea how that happened. Even to this day, I'm not even sure. Cause he usually tags people um, but it, it just was weird to see him like put photo credit, put my Instagram and it, it was, it was so easily accessible for people who saw it to just go straight to my Instagram. And it was so crazy. And, um, at the time I just didn't know what it really meant for my career. So I was excited, but at the same time, everything was going so wild on Instagram that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. Um, but I think to this day, I feel like that's the way that clutch also found my page was from that I never really asked anyone I didn't I I didn't want to figure out what they like uh saw to like find out my work but I think it might have been that because around that time after I think that's when they had reached out and and asked if I wanted to join clutch was around after that so I do you feel more like when that happens and your following goes 7 to 20k Mm -hmm. do you feel more pressure now to improve your quality of, of you know it's like yeah. <laughs> i'm a changing lot. my bio like you know you're, a lot. you're yeah, checking definitely. your bio you're everything making you're sure like is your next five photos are fire yeah, like exactly. everything everything you're saying is exactly like what i went through i made sure you know my bio was straight i made <laughs> sure you know like i archived some of my ugly pictures from before because you know people were starting to like look through my pictures and i was just making sure everything was good and i definitely put more thought into like what i was posting after that um because he was literally one of the first players to ever post so I wasn't really sure how to like take that you know and for him to be the first one obviously is crazy because he has a big following and and it just it was hard for me to like figure out what exactly to do so I just you know took it step by step and um you know that's where I am today (laughs) have you had any other photos or moments that increase your following because I mean that was a you know, you, you more than doubled it. Like, yeah. have you, are there any kind of viral um, photos or moments that you can remember? I think the only other one was from from that same All Star weekend. I don't know if you remember that picture of LeBron and Giannis that they were guarding each other, and then the crowd in the background was standing, and then they were all like looking at the moment, and then I think Quavo posted it that we had sent it and then I think Bleach Report picked it up, put my tag in it and then that one like made my page a little viral too. I think it was, it, it went from probably like 25 to like 32 or 35 or something like that. But that, 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 was, that was, was a big great. weekend for you. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, yeah, I always go back to that all-star weekend cause I don't know, it was just a, a fun weekend overall. And it was the first time I think Clutch had, you know, asked me to take care of something so important for that weekend like I was going around doing stuff for you know AD because he was at home and then the the clutch dinner and then the all-star game was also so crazy that weekend too so um yeah I think that that picture was also really fun and crazy you you mentioned getting on clutch's radar Mm -hmm. and with, with that LeBron photo 
Uh, so you're working at Lakers Nation. You're doing that for several seasons. How do you end up at Clutch Sports in what I think is a really unique position? I, you know, to my knowledge, I don't know of another full-time photographer with an agency. And I think what you're doing is, is really cool with not only the on-court stuff, but off the court and, and you know, flying into different places and, and lifestyle stuff for uh, NBA and NFL athletes. So how do you end up at Clutch Sports? And was that the easiest decision you've ever made? Or you know, did you have to think about you know, what went into that? Uh, it was funny at the time, I actually, I've, I heard of Clutch, but I didn't really understand what it was. I, I wasn't too familiar with like agencies or like who repped who. Um, and I just obviously knew Clutch because of LeBron at the time. Um, but I was at Lakers Nation and then Lucas, who is also an agent at Clutch, he, I think he had just reached out to me on Instagram. He said he was going to the game, um, just wanted to link up and, and just uh, keep in touch on, on projects in the future. And I told him super down to do that. And then he, he knew I was working for Lakers Nation at the time. Um, and then he just took me to the office. Um, we, I met everybody. I wasn't really sure what was happening um, in terms of if I was like being recruited to like shoot for them. But I just remember at the time they had started asking me to come and shoot different events here and there. Um, I had figured I was going to have to make a decision sooner or later on like if I was leaving Lakers Nation or um, staying with them, which was obviously really hard because at the time like Lakers Nation basically gave me <laughs> my chance at sports and, and all that. And so I was even thinking about like, should I be really leaving this? And then, but when I just really thought it out, it just was a smarter play and, and to go to clutch. And obviously now when I look back on it, it's so dumb that I even, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb that I even like gave it a second thought. Clutch is just, is a, is a company that's so different and, and the, the opportunity opportunities that they've given me have been amazing and there's no other words that I can say to kind of describe what what clutch is and and what the positions they're putting me in um but it's definitely unique at the time I think we had talked about how no one really has uh no agency really has like their own in-house photographer videographer and so um it was definitely a time where we had to kind of talk about like what my position would really be and so that kind of scared me because you obviously don't want to go into something new with no real position or or description of like what you're doing um and i had came from previous jobs where they had a, a great description on like exactly what i was yeah. doing and so it was it was definitely a learning process but i'm happy i made the the decision and uh and and going into clutch and and what i know today now too so super sick so what's it been like working for Clutch? I mean, you, you just talked about how it's been the best decision you feel like you've made in your career, but you know, what, what have the past couple of years been like for you? Yeah, I, I feel super lucky to be part of this company. You know, they've made some crazy steps these last couple of years and just Rich in general and Farah have both, you know, changed the game, I feel like. And just to be a witness to that is obviously a blessing. And then just the people over there are all so amazing. Um, all my coworkers, we all get along really well. It was it was funny because in the beginning, when I first had had um, interviewed for like the position, there was only like six or seven employees at the time. And when I walked in, I thought I was walking into like a full department of creatives that I was just gonna like be a part of. Um, but over time, in within the last like two or three years, it's grown, and now there's probably like thirty or forty of us. And so it's good to be a part of something big. You know, I. Every time I go into the office, it's I just sit and like <laughs> am thankful because it's it's just such a crazy opportunity and to see like what we are doing as a company is is crazy sick. It's amazing. Uh, there's nothing else. I don't know what else to say about it, but definitely a unique experience and like um, yeah, I think that's all I could say about that really. <laughs> so you grow up a Laker fan and you start working at Lakers Nation and you're you're covering LeBron and and um, you know, Lonzo and, and, and all the players kind of in that 2017, 18, 19 range. Uh, what is the transition like for you going from covering the Lakers mm -hmm. and being somewhat of a Laker fan mm -hmm. to not only working, you know, on the agency side and, and working with players, but you're working with LeBron and AD, who are, you know, the, the two biggest stars of the Lakers 
like what what was that transition like for you from being more on the the fan and, and media side of it to working with these guys um i would say so in the beginning like when i was at lakers nation i was definitely you know rooting for one specific team obviously because i was covering them so I just, you know, had a rooting interest with, you know, the Lakers, hoping they did well. And, you know, when they have a better season, it's easier to cover them. Mm -hmm. But once I transitioned to Clutch and I just met the rest of the players on the roster and um, it was so hard because all of a sudden it wasn't even really about who was winning. It was more about making sure these players do well or like seeing these players do well, cheering them on. And like you meet them personally and it's like you want everyone to succeed, you know. And so over time, it stopped being about you know, hoping one team wins and just more about all of the players doing well and making sure they succeed. And I think that's what changed the most is when you meet these guys, you really want them all to win. And so I think that's what changed the most. Looking back on your career o over the past few years, what is one piece of advice that you would give a aspiring sports photographer listening to this podcast right now? Uh, so I get that question a lot, and I always say the same answer because I think it is really important. But I, th I guess this has to do with you as well. It's just whenever you go into a room and if you're, like, say you're a photographer, you kind of want to be aware of who's in that room and make sure you kind of do them the favor of getting pictures of everyone in that room. And so every time I walk into a place, um, you know, like a gym, say someone's working out, when I get in there, I make sure I take a picture of the player, the trainer, you know, the the players' families, maybe they want pictures, you know, the, the writer in the corner who's writing a piece about the person, um, other photographers in there. And then at the end of the day, that's kind of like that key to build that relationship with that person. So for example, for you, I remember the first time, I, don't, I think I saw you at Ball is Life or a tournament or something like that, shot a couple pictures of you, sent it to you, you said, these are sick. The next week, you had an opportunity to interview Migos. I don't know if you remember that. You texted me and you said, I'm about to do this piece on the Migos. Do you want to come shoot for me? And, you know, that was all because, like, if I didn't take pictures of you at that time, like, you would never know what my work looked like. Um, and then it just builds that relationship. And I feel like everyone that asks me, I always tell them, you know, look out for everyone, not just the one person who's, like, the player in that room. Just look out for the people around them make sure you take care of those people too. And it's like being a photographer is a very, you know, important job. I feel like those moments get lost if you don't capture them. And so you're giving the gift of reliving certain moments for people. And so just make sure like you, you do that for everybody, you know, not just like certain people that you are trying to get close to, but everyone in the room. And that's like what I tell people the most usually. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause we, we were <laughs> talking about it before the pod of, of, I went back through our DMs, like, yeah. you know, scrolling through and it was back in early 2018, you yeah. uh, responded to one of my stories and mm -hmm. you were like, hey, if you ever need any photos or, or videos of, of an event you're doing yeah. and, you know, look at, look at you now. Like, it's look just, at it's, us it's, now. I mean, look yeah, at, this is crazy. <laughs> like to be on a this podcast is a, it's a full you, circle moment. For it's us, definitely man. full circle. I mean, er, I feel like every, the, every step of the way we definitely kept in contact and that, that's what I mean. Like you build these relationships with people. And you just never know like what can come out of that relationship. And so that's why I feel like it's important to like build those and just look out for the people that are there. And, it's, you know, karma will come back and, and help you out sometime eventually. <laughs> All right. The last question here. What is Daryl Ann doing in 2025? 2025. What is that? Like four, four, four years? Well, three. Oh, we're almost three, Almost yeah. three. Um, I, I mean, I hope by then I'm still at Clutch. I really don't see myself leaving. They're just the best company to be with right now. And so I really hope I'm still here. <laughs> hopefully they <laughs> still have me. Um, and I'm hopefully shooting games still, you know, not Staples, sadly. It'll be crypto. Crypto.com crypto 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 <laughs> by then. But, um, you know, and, yeah. and not just there, everywhere in the country. I want to travel to all the arenas and, you know, shoot all the players on our roster. And I'm hopefully still shooting love photography so i i definitely don't want to uh leave it anytime soon so hopefully still doing that um i just got married so i do want some kids <laughs> soon okay eventually um hopefully by then i have at least one or two but um i think i don't know i feel like i'm in a good spot now i definitely want to do this for the next four or five years um but after that i have no idea <laughs> i don't even know how i got here so <laughs> it, it's worked for you man <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh yeah. daryl anything you want to plug before we get out of here 
Um, no, nothing really. I mean, you can keep up with me on my Instagram, Gradient Visuals, with a G R A Y D I E N T visuals. That usually throws people off because um, <laughs> they just type in the gradient. But um, nothing much. I mean, the the Instagram clutches Instagram clutch sports. Um, just keep up with that, and then everything clutch is doing. Just support that, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All right, well, thanks, man. I appreciate, right, appreciate you. you bro. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, that does it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Stargazing. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the Athletics YouTube channel.